is going on, guys? It is Darth Pipes and one from Illogical Gaming here today with Priest from Illogical Gaming, and today obviously. we are bringing you footage from the open beta of Battlefield One. Now, again, this is just the beta; it's not the full release. Uh, we only have one map really to look at, and two different game modes. One's Great Conquest, which you all know and love, and Rush, which we'll kind of touch on. It's not the greatest, but it's still playable. <laughs> so right now we have Priest at the helm. He's, uh, what are you doing right now, Priest? I'm dropping some bombs, I think, but I have no idea how to do this, so we're kind of learning as we go. Okay, you're, uh, you're, oh, you're all alone. You're pretty vulnerable. The thing about the bomber is you can't really, uh, you can't fight back whatsoever unless you have uh, one person in the front turret and one person behind you in the back turret. That's the one downside of the bomber. One thing I just want to mention right off the bat is this game is pretty. It is gorgeous. This game has graphically everything you're looking for in a game, and I'm pretty sure I just hit that mountain. Oh yeah. Yep. But uh, as far as landscape goes, the game is gorgeous. The weapons are beautiful. As you can see, they've kind of laid out your map here for you, not unlike any other. The the spawning in is, I mean, it's a it's a cool idea. You just choose where you go, and then go ahead and spawn in. You whoop, there you are. And like as you can see here, like everything is just generally beautiful. Now we should preface real quick. We are playing on the Xbox One, so if you play on PC, it's probably going to be noticeably twice <laughs> as beautiful as what you're seeing right now undoubtedly it all of course just depends on your console of choice mm -hmm. but for beta uh the servers are doing pretty well they didn't used to originally they had some issues first couple of days i i mean it was nearly unplayable you were lucky if you got into a server now rush was a little easier to get into but if you wanted to play conquest the crown jewel of this beta forget about it you weren't getting in like at all <laughs> Oh, you're gonna take him out? Well, if you'll keep moving, I might. Oh, no, I don't even I don't even see him. He probably died. Oh, there he is. Is that him? That looks like him. Well, it looks like a body. I think you're just shooting us. He might he may have gotten murdered Oh. Or not. Okay. Somebody else is gonna get murdered though. <laughs> but as you can see, the snipers they do a decent amount of damage. Um obviously not as much depending on your range. Range oh, is everything. Of course it helps if you can hit stuff, but it, you know. it also does help if you can hit stuff. <laughs> We have lost. I'm not the best shot, but I'm working on it. Nice! 85 points of damage. And that is on a scale of 100. This <laughs> game scales your health bar 0 to 100. Uh, at 0 life, obviously, you will die. And yeah, that's another neat feature if, for those of you who don't know about Battlefront. Uh, what you just saw there was a uh, lens flare. Battlefield, but you know. And he can... Uh, or Battlefield, yes, my apologies. So whenever a sniper's looking at you, and if you'll notice in the bottom left hand of the screen, you can see I'm, uh, I've kind of got a little, like range scope there it shows you where all i can see it's kind of moving with me as i turn back and forth on the map well when you zoom in that narrows down drastically and anybody in that line can see your little lens flares and that's one of the the cool things i've always liked about battlefield is just the the tiny details that they go through from the destruction to little glints off you know sniper rifle scopes they've always been really really good about that um one thing i want to talk about just like based off the weapons and stuff is that i mean the snipe you were talking about the snipers and how different they are um and that's true, they're great. I mean, just the the weaponry in general. I mean, from pistols to assault rifles to semi-automatic, you know, DMRs. I mean, they, they're they all really, really unique. Like, this guy, he's got this massive, you know, primitive-looking LMG. And he just, you know, just laid waste to you in no time. Yes, which is something that a lot of the different weapons, uh, they, they can do that. Um, <clears throat> they have, like, incredibly high rapid fire, like, like rates of fire with lower accuracy. So the closer you get, the more you're going to be able to do. Whereas from an angle and like a distance like this, this isn't going to do much because you can see it kind of really jumps and doesn't have a whole lot of accuracy going the, on for it. The assault weapons were definitely made for more close. It, it's almost as if the assault rifles are actually more of uh, SMGs at this point, which I mean, of course, you know, again, as you said, the accuracy just kind of plays into that quite a bit. No, you did. You took a substantial piece out of them. Now, one of the things that they really um, tried to emphasize in this one uh, is the close quarters combat with the uh, with the weapon stuff. Hence, giving you the bayonet and the bayonet charge and stuff like that. Which the bayonet charge is great for closing the distance between you and an enemy and just eviscerating them. I mean, you just <laughs> you run them through with the the bayonet. I don't know if you'll be able to. Oh, there's three of them in there. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, I was trying to show you a little bit there. I kind of hoped the guy that went around the corner would stay so I could show you the bayonet charge. We'll try and give you a little view of that here in a minute. I'll bring it back and mention it if I do get a chance to. But we're just going to go right back into where I was at over there where there's definitely a lot of people. I'm um, hoping to spawn on this vehicle here. No, that's that's another direction. thing I want to talk about real quick is vehicle combat. It, from ground units to air units, you can ride on freaking horses. As you can see, this guy just rides like, no, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. But uh, the mounted combat's really, it, I mean, it's a unique idea uh, in a war simulator, such as Battlefield. And of course, there are also the uh, the primitive tanks, the light tanks, which can only hold one person, and then the monstrous uh, land ships that can have crews of five, actually more or less need crews of five to operate, otherwise you're going to be vulnerable on every side. <laughs> Yes, and that's something that we will get to and hopefully show you later on. Right now, we don't have access to any of those, so I'm just going to kind of keep on showing you what I can. And it looks like we're back on that guy with the horse. He's really doing a good job running away from this vehicle. But all the different vehicles have their own little unique things. Some of them move faster. Some of them have heavier weapons. Um, that's a given. It's always been that way with uh, Battlefield in general. Battlefield 1, obviously no exception to that. Um, the horseback, by the way, if you do happen to spawn on a horse or... Rather, I, only if you spawn on a horse. I well, no, you can actually, um, you can kill someone off their horse, take their horse, and use the horse like that as well. We have taken it's like it's like any other vehicle. As soon as you hop on that horse, you you pull out your sword, you can go just yep. charging into the battle. But when you spawn onto a horse, you get a whole different set of weaponry. Yes. Uh, you are a uh, cavalryman. Yep. Spawning onto a vehicle, you become. That person, every time you spawn into a, well, most vehicles, spawning into a jeep, of course not, but, uh, like if you spawn into a tank, you're gonna spawn in as, uh, as a crewman for that tank, and that crewman has its own loadout. You spawn in as a pilot, uh, for an airplane. If you have to parachute out and jump out, you have a load, there, that pilot has its own loadout, it has its own guns. Uh, cavalrymen, like you were just saying, yeah, you spawn in a horse, you get off your horse, you still have the cavalrymen, uh, weaponry however if you say hop onto a horse or you hop into a tank and then you get back out you will not you'll still retain your current loadout precisely which the cavalryman loadout which is what i was trying to get to is uh very good in that it has a, a high output damage output primary weapon which is a, a sort of a, a rifle it's a lever action rifle yeah it's a lever action rifle high damage output and the secondary weapon, I believe, is just a sword, isn't it? Uh, no, you get the, um, you have the lever action rifle, you have a pistol, and then your melee weapon is actually, is the, the cavalryman sword. Okay. Well, actually, you might have just seen there, uh, you might have to go back and rewind your video a second, there was a little glimpse of a sniper somewhere up in that area. And, uh, anytime you see one of those, that is a sniper. It's just a little flash, it looks almost like somebody's got a flashlight kind of pointing it at you. And that's just showing that they're aiming down their sights in your direction. That's just like a little, like the sun or light is just kind of shining off of it and you can no notice it. I, I've noticed that about this map. Snipers love that, that ridge. I mean, and, and it's always, <laughs> I've noticed it's always the team that I'm not on that has control of that, of that ridge. <laughs> that is generally an issue in Conquest. You have all these areas that you have to take. Uh, some of them are more easily defended than others. It's always been that way as far as Battlefield goes, which it's normal. Like that, that is sort of one of the realistic aspects of the game, in that um, with those different areas, some are more easily defended. There you go. As so, some are more easily assaulted. He's up there somewhere. He's looking at me. Now I have noticed, uh, as the cavalryman, um, if you get off your horse and you go running around and stuff, it seems like uh, you're a little more durable than other people. Um, Mostly because I mean I I know the the character model they have that big metal plate on the on their chest but I think that actually comes into play I could be wrong I just figured I'd bring that up but you know absolutely what I'm trying and to say I, I I haven't played enough to get a good feel for uh, durability with different characters but I would not be surprised at all if they did factor that in as well that you do have that plate on you mm -hmm. uh, which I did not give you a good look at here a moment ago maybe if I die you might get a chance to see it on my corpse. Another good thing, a kind of a theatric thing, is that they will show you your corpse after you die, which is kind of cool. You'll, you'll see yourself like fall over, and then it'll, sh it'll show who killed you. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which... Yeah, right? While we're on the topic of character durability, I um, feel like I'll go ahead and say they have added a 
pseudo hero unit into this game kind of like battlefront how they had like darth vader boba fett kind of thing except now i'm not saying you're gonna find a character running around with a lightsaber or anything but they've added um hero units like say they have a flamethrower somewhere around the map or a couple of different places where it could spawn around the map and whoever grabs that flamethrower becomes a a hero unit, you know, and they get to run around with the flamethrower and their durability goes up substantially and they're harder to kill. However, I think they're vulnerable on the back, <clears throat> you know, because of the big old uh, flammable tanks. Right. This is one thing that it does, instead of taking you to the after action report or the, the end game report, whatever it's called, it'll take you here to the next game. It'll go ahead and start it up. But half the time, it won't even... Yeah, see, look, now we're going to another screen. And so what's happening here? Oh, okay. Yeah, see, it's the end of round report. But that could also just be an issue with I, the beta. That, that, that's the, why yeah, they yeah, do yeah, betas, yeah. Is so that you can kind of test it out, get a feel for what's going on before ever releasing the full game. That way they can make sure everything is perfect before they do. Yep, Darth Pipes has taken control. He's got a little more game plan than me. Hopefully he can show you some more stuff than I was able to. But in general, you're already yeah. seeing a whole different view. Oh, yeah. Right now we've got this is the back of a bomber, isn't it? Uh, no, this is actually it's oh it's not the fighter plane, but we have taken it is the I think it's just the standard biplane. Um, the fighter plane there there are three types of planes you can spawn in. There's the bomber, the biplane, and then the fighter plane. The fighter plane is actually a one man uh, airplane. We have lost objective. Now, uh oh. Oh! And so where the bomber is th a three-man airplane, you'll yeah. have a, a one gunner on the back, one gunner on the front, and you're piloting it, obviously dropping the bombs and so forth. Whereas, like, your basic fighter, you said, is a one-man? Yeah, the fighter jet is a... It's a one-man... Uh, and I would assume that that would just have, like, you'd have your basic controls over your primary weapon in the front. Probably no rear gun. Nope, you just have no. two primary... Uh, you have two primary machine guns in the front of your plane... And that's about it. Now, I've noticed the fighter is actually fairly decent at taking out bombers. And the best way, really, to take out a bomber is to target the engines. Don't, not the pilots, but if you target its rear propellers, that thing will go down fast. So there again, we're just seeing another aspect that they've incorporated into their game, where they're taking this Ooh. sort of realistic feature to it. Where it's like, okay, well, if you shoot at the plane and the, the pilot itself at the body of it, it's not going to do as much damage, because that has no sort of incredible impact on whether or not the plane can continue to fly so much as the engines do where if you shoot at the engines you're going to kill it really quickly the plane will go down and whatnot uh but if you shoot at the pilot maybe well maybe you get your lucky shots and you hit the pilot that, that'll probably take the plane down really quickly but otherwise it, it's a very realistic take on mm -hmm. battle in general and that's and, something that everybody's liking about these games so far and they actually have medals for doing stuff like, it. like i was actually looking through some of the medals just that they have available on the beta and uh, oh Ooh. And they actually have medals for dismantling um, engines, or well, shooting down engines, uh, blowing apart wings and stuff like that on different airplanes. And of course, they have more for you know the tanks and and such. But those are the only ones that really come to mind right now. Right. And that, as to be expected, uh, they also have this sort of unrealistic quality where all of your different soldiers are parkour experts. Yeah. But that's a given thing with any sort of a war game. So that's something everybody will just generally overlook. It's not a huge deal, and it kind of adds to the general flow and consistency of the game in that it makes it go a little bit more smoothly and faster. I will say, speaking of fast gameplay, I love being able to just charge through uh, closed doors. Which is also really nice. By the way, in this game, you can open doors. You don't just have to like blow them up or anything like that. You can just open them, charge through them. Doors, uh, windows. Right, everything. And, and I mean, they're all destructible, too. Yes, and, and just like always with Battlefield, everything can be destroyed. So, I mean, if you don't want to open the door, blast through it. Why not? Yeah. Just waste a whole clip on a door just to open it anyways. Right. But it's uh, it's entirely up to you, and they've added this just wonderful, realistic aspect to the game. Uh, bombings, every time you drop a bomb, it will leave a crater in the ground. And the crater will not go away. Yeah, the crater will Like, usually go away. in games, you know, you see the crater. It's like, oh, look, crater. Oh, it healed. Whatever. Deal. Still, uh, sadly, no opportunities to show you a tank yet. Uh, maybe one will come. We'll see. Uh, when it does, though, you can bet that we're going to cover everything we can cover about it and let you know everything we can let you know about it. Um... And as you can see, again, uh, the tanks aren't easy to find. You can see kind of around the uh, starting point there on your far left, there are zero tanks, zero cavalry, and zero airplanes available. Also no, and that's just to spawn in. See, like, I could spawn into an airplane. Right, and you can always spawn to, into you know. airplanes and vehicles and so forth. 
but as you can see, like it's an item that is uh, highly sought out because there are not many of them. A lot of people are probably wanting to get get in on the action of these battle tanks and get a feel for how the new battle tanks and things work. Speaking of tanks, I think they have this one stuck. It does look like it. And uh, this is one of several different versions of the different battle tanks and so forth. Uh, this one has guns on, I believe, every side of it. Mm -hmm. Every single side you can shoot out of. So with a full vehicle, uh, you'll be able to take out infantry units without any issue whatsoever and just kind of roll right into the middle of a conquest point, which is something that is generally very nice. Does it have any sort of a uh, cannon of any type on it? I don't believe so. We can go ahead and take a, an external. Okay, it has a front cannon. But it doesn't have. It has two rear machine guns, a front cannon, and then machine guns on every other side. Which, in like I said, in general, it's kind of like a roll into the middle of a conquest zone, take out all the infantry type of vehicle, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. in these sort of maps where you can just drive into the middle of a sort of civilian area and just start taking out people from windows and buildings and every little crevice they can pour out of. We here at Illogical Gaming have actually nicknamed that to or that tank the Toaster, just based off of its. It's body type. I don't know if you got a, a decent look at it, but... Yeah, and it's, it's just really a shame that it doesn't shoot fire, because that would make it all the more accurate. Right. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Yep, there goes the toaster. Yep, there's the toaster, ready to toast up some bread. Nice and tasty. I'm actually... I've actually switched to the medic class. They have uh, two semi... Right now, currently, available. Just in the beta. They have two semi-auto weapons and a full auto weapon. There we go! And there it is, a good look at the charge... Uh, the bayonet charge there for you. Ooh. I don't exactly know what happened. Yeah, and, and, and like that right there, that that's something that you're going to encounter in these types of he games. He might have reversed my melee. It could very well be. And it uh, looks like the battle train is rolling out onto the map now. Right, we got the behemoth uh, vehicle coming in. Not sure if we're going to get... Yeah, we are. Oh, yeah, we we're are. We're going to get you a nice view of it. Um, this is from, I believe, the front. Very yep. Yeah, he's on the very front of it. Yep, we are on the front cannon. And it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Go ahead and get a nice I've heard it's, external view. It's a little bit uh, bulky in that it doesn't have a whole lot of uh, directional options. No. And well, so, it has to maintain a, right, a certain you, direction. You've got your forward motion, and that's about it. But otherwise, the, the damage output from it is outstanding. The only issue we're seeing with it is that people generally avoid it or just do strafe runs where they can just bomb it and get it over with. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's beautiful. It's a nice addition to the game. Um, they did a good job with it, I'd say, in that, man, he's really gunning for that airplane. No, someone they, just they, tagged uh, it. They did a good job with it in that it looks really good, it adds a lot to the map, and you can, like you're seeing right now, you can really destroy and alter the terrain with it, and possibly strategically alter it in your favor for sieging and so forth. It's a, it's a game changer. Oh, I had to reload, otherwise that guy would have been toast. But in general... They've added a lot of stuff, changed a lot of stuff, and just made additions and takeaways and little things based on the time era of World War One. I. I am not very good with this cannon. Does it have any sort of a zoom optic? Or yes, it does. A little bit. That'll probably help. Or you'll just miss. Can we uh, get to move? Get this maybe? train to moving. You see, this uh, is half the reason why I'm not a huge fan of the battle train. Yeah, strategically speaking, it's not the best. In the oh, and I'm also outside the combat area. Oh, no. Let me back in. Let me back in. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in. It looks like somebody took your seat. Oh. Well, so I'm dead. Just dead. <laughs> but that, that is a kind of an issue with the battle train, is that you go to one point, and then you go back to the other, and there's not a whole lot of option of what you can do with it, because a lot of times when the battle train will come up, you'll see that people will just completely avoid the railroad tracks in general. Yeah. Because it's easier to just ignore the battle train than it is to deal with it. And mm -hmm. see, in this situation where you've got like four or five players on it, you notice you've lost a lot of control of the map because there's so many of your players focused on that as opposed to control of the conquest areas. Yeah. Now, I feel like a lot of the other behemoths will actually be better. The train isn't my favorite. I'm really looking forward to be able to get my hands on the Zeppelin blimps. Which I is, feel like that will be just amazing. Which is something a lot of us are looking forward to, but they're not going to let us try that out yet. They've only given us access to the one map with the beta, like we said before. And I don't really blame them. I wouldn't want to give away my whole game in the beta either, especially if it's something we're only trying to kind of test out and make mm -hmm. sure everything is working smoothly. All right. Ooh, that's a good time to jump out right there. Well, here's an example. See, now I'm a, I'm a pilot. Oh. oh. In the graphics, and you're dead. 
the graphics for stabbing people in this game look really Amazing. good. Amazing. <laughs> um, we've seen a lot of different melee attacks and stabbing outside of this game. Uh, killing, you can, you can, I believe you can bludgeon someone to death with a club. Yeah. Can you? Oh yeah. Um, and it, all, all of it looks really beautiful. All the cinematics in the game are gorgeous as far as that goes. Like they took their time. You can really tell that they wanted to make it look good for the players, and they did. They did a really good job of that. Graphically, it's a oh, wonderful game. I don't have so, the Mauser this time around. Personally, I would say that graphically, uh, I would give the game uh, a solid nine out of ten. The only reason I'm giving it a nine out of ten and not a ten out of ten is because with other things like personally built computers and so forth, you can get better graphics, and I'm sure they have the better graphics set up for those. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so just based on what you have played of the beta so far, let's go ahead. The match is, the match is winding down to a close. You know, the battle train's out. We have two minutes left, and the enemy team is pulling ahead. So just based off what you've seen right now if you were to give the beta a rating out of let's just say out of five since it's a beta we won't we won't right. go the full 10 we'll just say out of five what would you give the beta uh the beta for itself, what's available for what's available i'm going to give the beta a solid five i thought it was excellent i thought they did a good job presenting their game um i thought it was graphically wonderful the different differences in classes uh vehicles like generally giving you a feeling for what the game is going to be i think they did the best job they could possibly do with it. I thought it was wonderful and general. And I think anybody wouldn't... There, I don't think there's anybody that would be disappointed to play this. I think it was just really good. So I, I think a solid 5 out of 5. I think all the sheer disappointment really came from just the lack of server support. Yeah, which... Um, and with that, it's like, I want to... Because you actually didn't get a chance to play during all of that, you know? I did not. That is you, I've always had a server set up for you whenever you have... You know, whenever you've come over and played, but... Um, you know, just based off my experience and stuff, um, I would have to give it probably a, a four. Like I said, just because of the I walked right into that. You really did. Yeah, <laughs> just because of the poor server support the first couple of days, it would just. I don't want to say it's unacceptable because it happens. You know, it's a beta. It's gonna happen. But at the same time, it was just really, 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 really annoying. You know what I mean? Just to have to to deal with it. A game that everyone has been you know anticipating. Yeah, everyone's been anticipating and clamoring to get their hands on it, you know. And then the servers broke. I mean I, it's happened before, but you figured right. they would have some sort of fail safe by now. You know what I mean? You would think that before the beta they would have sort of a fail safe for the servers, but I think that that's something they weren't quite anticipating. Right, right. Was the general strain on their servers for this beta. But that aside, what would you give it? If we're if we're moving the server troubles aside, I would still probably give it a 4.5, mostly because of two two things. Rush, I'm not a super huge fan of that game. I know there's a lot of people that are. I'm just I'm not. Um, and um, the fact that there was only one map to play on. Now I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, but it's a huge map, blah 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 blah. But Titanfall gave us three maps to play on. Now, Titanfall gave us three maps to play on. They weren't as big, right? They weren't super huge. However, there was a variety. You know what I mean? Right. I, I never got, okay, you know, aside from the occasional double lobby deal where it would put you into the same map, uh, you know, multiple times. Even still, you know, you would eventually get to another map and be able to play. You know, I wish they at least had a secondary map. Like, for Rush. Like, if they had a different map for just Rush. You know what I mean? Right. Then maybe I would have enjoyed it a little bit more just because of the, chain of, or the change of scenery. But I just... I, I'm not a super huge fan of this desert map anymore. I, I want more. You know, that, that, I think that's, that's really it. It's I just, I want more. You know. Yeah, and that's kind of understandable. The same me. is really just the same map is dragging it down. And what was your me. what was your second reason for not giving it the full five? It, that was just the game mode of Rush. It the just wasn't. Yeah, was just I feel like they I feel like they should have had something else other than that. It that yeah, it just wasn't my my favorite. Again, there are people that like it, but not me. <laughs> but right on there, you have it. Um, Ig Priest, I'm gonna give it a solid five of five. I'm gonna Both give it pipes. a four point five. Four point five. We thought it was overall a very good game. Uh, Great beta. Didn't meet all of our expectations, but it was generally excellent. It, it met enough of them for me to say that it was great, and I would definitely, definitely recommend you play it if you haven't, and 
you know, if if you're one of the, if you're if you're someone that pre-orders games, I would give this one a pre-order. If you're not, wait till it comes out. We'll we'll actually as soon as it comes out, we will do a video on uh, whether you should buy it at launch or not. So stay tuned for that, guys. Until next time, this has been Darth Pipes and IG Priest. Keep it real. <laughs>